Well, hello, boys and girls. It's when we feel like it o'clock. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom with the ever-present Joe Borak. We are also part of BPOW, Borak and Pow. Yes, for Borak and Pearls of Wisdom, BPOW, which is a betting site that we do. And this Joe, Joe Borak is, is a fantastic hockey mind and also does also really well in ball. We get together and talk about the latest topics that we're going on right now thank you all for subscribing and hitting the bell that you've been doing lately and uh, coming on to our patreon we really do appreciate it also getting hits on steel flyers www.steelflyers.com that should keep on looking at what's coming on there because that is going to be one fantastic website today we just had some huge news didn't we i think it's huge anyways uh seems like a small play, but when you dig down a little deeper in it, it leaves a lot of questions in your mind to what's going on with Montreal, what's going on with St. Louis. That being of the Jake Allen traded to the Montreal Canadiens for I just draft picks pretty much a third yeah, and a seventh. seventh. Uh Canadians got Jake in a seventh from the Blues for a third this year, which is actually pretty solid for Jake Allen and a seventh yeah. round pick. Yeah. yeah, I think you got quite. I think they got quite a good return for Jake Allen, in that sense. Since goaltenders usually don't bring in a lot, but Joe, now you've got a ten million dollar goaltender in price, the underrated one now, which is unbelievable to say, <laughs> the underrated one. I like to call him. Why do we bring in a four point? Some million dollar. We're basically looking at fifteen million dollars wrapped up in two goaltenders for next year. What's your what? Where, what's Montreal doing here? What do you figure? Uh, my guess would be kind of what we talked about before the video. Uh, Price a couple years ago, due to being banged up, only played around fifty. Then last year he played in the mid sixties, and then this year he would have played over sixty if we didn't have the season stop because he was at fifty eight. Um, at the time of the season's pause. So I think they're kind of going at this point. You're it's maybe they're moving, but I think it for next year, it's more, you might not be that 60 to 70 game guy anymore. You might be the 50 to 55. So then we have you fully, if we do, get to the well first of all if we keep this extended playoffs they'll probably find a way in but if they do get to the playoff then you have Carey Price um in there to be the guy that steps up and does great for you as he did this year and almost won them the series against the, the Flyers so uh the that's the thinking I have now why they would get Jake Allen for 4.3 million dollars for one year is a little bit of a different story um but maybe like i said before the video since maybe they've had these conversations already uh in-house with carrie price almost saying look this is kind of what we think um you would be um at this point of your career we want to keep you here so your health's the best and then if we make it and or there is an expanded playoffs and they keep a similar format like they've been talking about then we would probably be in there more so keep you fresh and if that's the case well price is a hall of famer a great goal in the league they might have respected him enough to say who would you like as your backup and if they respected him enough to say that well one of my top guys as a goalie probably would have been jake allen too looking at how good he did behind bennington this year uh, what his numbers were when he was in games this year, how he stood on his head in some games for St. Louis as well. I mean, I, I wouldn't like if I'm picking somebody I want is my backup. I don't care about their salary cap. That's what the team has to deal with. So I'm picking someone I like from how they perform. If they're asking me, I could care less how it affects their cap. I'm mean, they're asking me who I want is the best performer behind me, who I think is going to be confident and a great guy in the room. So if that's the case, then Jake Allen points all to that. And it's proven with um, 
something he said today, uh, where as soon as he got traded, Rutherford asked him, the Blues reporter, and he said, my role was changed and I had a choice to accept it and thrive in it or not. I think last year was a perfect example, just doing whatever the team needs. It's really putting them before yourself, be a real team player and think, and a positive guy every day at the rink. So he's a guy that you would want to have in your goalie room as a great goaltender, one of the better of all time, because you know he's going to be a great mind and a guy that's always positive, a guy that's always trying to bring a smile into the room, no matter what's going on with your team at that current moment. And that's sometimes a nice thing to have to be able to do that there. And the other thing we have to remember is Billy Huso signed um, a two-year one-way contract um, back in January. So there's a 99% chance he's going to be their backup next year, I would say. Because if you committed to already signing him for a two-year one-way contract, that basically, as Rutherford said, puts him in line to be Jordan Bennington's backup. And then Jordan Bennington will have to get better and mature because Billy Huso is a pretty good young goalie. So if he keeps getting better, that's going to spell trouble if Bennington doesn't uh, come back to where he was a couple of years ago for him. Well, a year ago. But I, I like the move. I think it's a good move for them. And whatever they do with it, it'll be a good move for them because it'll be good in the goalie room if they keep Price. If they find a way to get rid of Price, well, Jake Allen's still great in the goalie room and then a good starter for you. So no matter which way you go, it's going to work out in my eyes. Now, my lean on this is uh, Montreal's major problem was quite obvious all year and in the playoffs is they – can't score. They don't. They need scores. Now, getting Allen with no cap in return, space given back in return, yeah. and also, as far as I can tell in their roster, not too many guys they can trade away to uh, make cap room. The ones that can be traded away would definitely make their value or would be their forwards probably more than anything. Um, or one guy. And then they'd have to replace it anyways because yeah. they don't really have all that much depth to take over here. Um, I, I think it's – One guy they sorry. could trade, though, is Petrie because he has one year left. Uh, he submits a 15-team no-trade oh. list if he's willing to go to somebody. Uh, he's a very solid defenseman still at 5.5. Somebody will take that from you. Sure. So I mean – that, that's possible, but they're going to have to replace it, and they're not all that depth on D anyway. No. They got Brett Kulak on there. To me, this screams that Price – I think Price finished the season and said, okay, you know what, we gave it our best shot. I see that we've got a lot of work to do here before we're going to be a cup contender. Um, this has been something that's talked about a while, I'm sure, and he's saying, yeah, maybe it's time to move on. And they're basically saying – you know, Montreal should have been rebuilding all the way along here. They gave it a shot to try not to rebuild, uh, but there is too many holes in this roster, just flat out too many holes in this roster for this team to be. That's why they went and tried to scoop Jonathan Duran for Sergachev, because they thought Jonathan Duran, there was a lot of people when Jonathan Duran was, was drafted by the Tampa Bay Lightning uh, over Seth Jones, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, who thought he was Kane-like, okay? Mm -hmm. He was going to be like Patrick Kane. He had mitts like that. And I think they threw, a, a, they, they, th they threw it out there thinking, okay, he had trouble in Tampa Bay. We still think he has Kane-like talent. We bring him in here. We got a Kane on that, on that side. We can now become a contender again. It really comes down to me that Duran did, after Duran didn't pan out, this team was pretty much left floundering because they really don't have enough, uh, and Durant, they don't have anything. So mainly because of health. They they have they don't really have a lot coming up that's going to be ready in the next couple of years. Um, they do have a pretty good prospect pool: uh, Jake Evans, uh, Lucas Valiermo, um, uh, Ryan Paling. Not bad, but they're not going to be ready for a couple no. of years. And but I just think that Price Andrew. is looking at it going, I'm 31 years old. I don't think, do I, do I want to continue rolling here for the next four years waiting when I'm outside of my prime? 
And I think they have kind of convinced him too. You know what? We tried and it didn't work. Yeah. Well, I was going to say Duran did really well in the playoffs though. And his, uh, his, uh, off performances isn't because he's not good. It's because he can't stay on the damn ice. <laughs> That's really uh, that, that's whatever really, the reasons that's really are. More, it's so not like, working. So, whatever the reasons are, it so didn't if, work. Yeah. So if he stays healthy, coming off of that playoffs, then maybe that's the ascending time. I mean, we have to remember he's only twenty five. Some guys don't figure it out until they're twenty six or twenty seven. Uh, so if he's able to do that, that can still very much help them. Problem is they still only have Kakani, Emi, and Suzuki as their other guys that are big headed monsters right. that happen. So you don't have the deepest team. But um, for goaltending purposes, as it stands right now, the Canadians are devoting at least four million more in cap space to goaltending than any other team in the league. Uh, right. Check in at fourteen point eight five. The next highest is the Florida Panthers who check in at 10.85. Yeah, and because they've got because they've got Bob. Mm-hmm. So I think they're going to be traded and we were talking about places that he may go here on this. So let's play around with this. It seems like maybe you're leaning that he's not being traded. I just personally can't see it. I like um Something it's because I don't think anybody will pull it off. That's why I said, like, I just go from percentages of things happening when I look at this and from following trades over the years. If there's only two or three teams it can work for, nine times out of ten, it doesn't work. That's I just think we're way. seeing less and less. And when you see a guy like Price, he can put you over the top. And the Pittsburgh Penguins, to me, there's Colorado Avalanche, Pittsburgh Penguins. And I think we said Minnesota Wild pretty much are the only ones that are going to be able that would make really any sense here out of all the teams that we looked at. And when you said Pittsburgh Penguins, it just screamed at me because that is a Rutherford mood right there. You could take a guy like Hornquist, send Jari back, or Murray, who's a restricted free agent, and they could sign Murray for a for a contract that's going to be still the two netminders will probably still make less than. Uh, still make less than uh, Price did. And uh, they can fill out that roster at $5 million. They still got a little bit of cap space. But Price is a guy that can make up for defensive deficiencies, as we've seen in Montreal. Like, Price's numbers have nothing to do. Mon- that's the other thing. Montreal's defense is brutal. <laughs> so where are they going to go get defense now that they've just paid $4 million for a backup? It just doesn't make sense to me. I can't see him staying there. It screams price is gone this summer to me. And I think getting back a guy like Hornquist, if you're going to do a rebuild, Hornquist is not, is a great guy to show these kids how it, what it takes to be in the NHL. He's one of the hardest working guys in the NHL. He's a great leader. He's a grinded out, do everything he can for his team type guy. And he would be a fantastic mentor for these young players coming up. And then Jari, if they if it happens to be Jari, I think that's where I would lean. Jari has a potential still to be a number one goaltender, and Allen has shown to do very well with a very difficult situation yeah. in St. Louis, where Bennington, uh, in all accounts I've heard, is a very arrogant kid and very difficult to get along with. So, and Allen didn't make the any waves. The issue is, do we think they're going to trade Price even for a goalie? Because at the, so they could say we don't need a goalie. Because if they really believe in Caden Primo, then they might go, okay, we need scoring. Who wants to give us scoring for Carey Price? And then go from that point rather than going from the other point. And, well, if they could convince – now, Rutherford is trying to compete. So this is going to be very, very hard to do this. But if you're trying to still compete, as Montreal, which it seems like they always are trying to do, they never seem like they're wanting to fully rebuild. Um, then a guy you could try to go with because it would help Pittsburgh's cap, and we know Rutherford will find somebody to get at center. You could throw it out there and say, "Hey, uh, we're giving you price. Uh, this Malkin guy over here oh, makes a lot of money." No, uh, I don't think so. What what are you thinking about that, Jeremy? Um, I don't think so. So, uh, because 
they don't need them anymore. I mean, they, they have guys coming up the bank. They also have guys they could sign that are probably arguably better than Malkin at this point of his career. Um, so it, it depends what you want to do there, but I doubt that very much. I mean, it's, First of all, I believe Malcolm. I'm sure Malcolm has in full no movement. He does. Clause. Yeah, I don't know if he wants. So, that. and I'm Malcolm and his agent discussing this, going, "Oh yeah, Montreal Canadiens who are so far away, and they're, you're not going to have price anymore on that line as a goaltender. Do I want to go to that situation? No, no way. If I'm Malcolm, there's no way I'm I'm okay in that trade. It, it, it just doesn't make any sense to me. And honestly, they. Yeah, they could consider trading Malkin, but uh, I don't. I just they do. They don't seem like they're ever wanting to do something like that. The, they'll. I think they'd want to take their roster. A guy like Patrick Waugh is the type of guy you throw him in Pittsburgh with a much better defense, although not a great defense, and much better two-way players. They come. Be, they can become a cup contender. I really do believe that, and I do believe also that they lost to Montreal. See, they played against each other, right? Murray, that team played like they had no faith in their goaltenders whatsoever. Yeah. So to me, it, I, I'm gonna, I'd almost want to place a bet on this if they gave me a line on it. Well, I'd almost want to place a bet on it that he's going to Pittsburgh. Montreal needs defense. So there's a good chance they're going to ask about the organizational darling if Pittsburgh wants him. And that organizational darling is Weber. No, one of Rutherford's best friends on the team, uh, Chris Letang. No, Letang's not going anywhere. No, I don't think so. But I think there is for him. If Jeremy Rutherford calls Pittsburgh, calls Pittsburgh, calls Montreal, Letang only has two years left on his deal, and seven point two five with now how he's actually been staying healthier is actually a pretty good contract. So if they're trying to not rebuild, like Montreal never says they're rebuilding, then the likelihood is one of their asks first is going to be, well, you have young defensemen you say you like, so do you really like them? So how about Chris Letang? (laughs) And then then you see how much they really do believe in their young defensemen, because if they hang up the phone right away, that's, that's when you know they've been BSing you about some other faith in their young defensemen if they actually talk for a couple minutes that's how you know that maybe i think that'd be a short conversation there's no way pittsburgh's trading letang i can't see montreal taking letang back if they're going to trade price uh if they trade price they're finally doing what they probably should do it's not really a full rebuild because they have a lot of young players there to build off of the problem is they'll be competitive but they won't make the playoffs that's for sure the thing is though letang has less like if you take horn Quist, he has way more uh, tenure than like Latang's yeah. done after next season. Hornquist has an extra year for less money, but he's also not going to be as like he's going to be more of a leader impactful on your team. Where if you get Chris Latang, um, he could probably have the support. Not probably. He would have the superior stats and also be a leader on your team. Because the where Hornchrist is as a winger at this point of his career is about here. Where Latang is as a defenseman is still somewhere up here. Uh so that's uh that's probably why they would ask for Latang. I think you're only taking Hornquist because, like I've mentioned before, that he can show those kids what it means to be an. Oh NHL. yeah, but so can. Chris I don't think Tang. Latang's in the same realm as Hornquist for that, and you're not looking to win anymore. You I don't know, think so. The they're Montreal. That's my point, though. Montreal. I don't think they're ever going to say they're not looking to win. Oh. That that's the that's that's just my I, like. I don't. They think... trade price. They're saying it. There's no doubt about it. They're uh-huh. they're they're their whole. Oh yeah, but the but they're going to come out price. to the media and say we. They're not going to come out in the media and say it. They're going to say we believe in Jake Allen. We think Hayden Primo is going to take over the starting role sometime. Of uh, granted, if there's an expanded playoffs, they might find their way in again. That's uh, why I think Murray would be the guy coming back. They could give Murray like four to five million because he's played so bad the last two three years. And they could spin it with the media if they're so worried about the media. He's a two-time Stanley Cup winner. 
So we think that our goaltending coaches can can get Murray back in his game again, That's and we true. can still yeah, compete. Try to do that. Like that. That's why I think Murray would be the guy that they would be coming back. Probably, I would rather have Jari myself. And but I'm not. I don't care about the media so much. You're right. The Molson family cares a lot about their image, and mm-hmm. they they do care a lot about their image, and a lot of their stuff is image related. Um, I, they, they do a lot of things I don't understand. I don't understand. I can't. I always forget his name. It's not Stuart. I always want to call him Stuart. Their uh, head scout or the head of scouting department guy hasn't had a first round pick pan out since Pacioretty, and he still has a job there. I do not understand that at all. Uh, Timmons, Timmons is his name. I can't understand that. I don't understand a lot of the things they do, but I think finally, and I might even go as far as to say that behind the scenes, Price was giving them a timeline. Mm-hmm. And finally, well, Price has said, that's it, I'm done. So it's not of, really Montreal's decision here. Yeah, speaking of Molson, uh, he also gave uh, Bergevin, since people were questioning him a couple months ago, a vote of confidence uh, from the uh, yeah. ownership chair. Yeah. Um, so I don't think he's going anywhere. Uh, I don't know what's going on there, why, but, why you wouldn't get rid of a general manager like that, but... But yeah, he gave, I, I mean, I think it's like it's. I think it's just image. He's been like it's comfortability for him. Uh, I think that's probably what it is. Now, if they go to the wild, I'm looking at that. I don't like their team as much for somebody that they would take back to fix the uh, issue there because uh, there's no chance Spurgeon's okay and going to Montreal with a no movement clause. Uh, that's just not happening. I don't happening. think they would dare trade Spurgeon uh, in that deal yeah, anyway. Yeah, and that's just not happening because uh, yeah. the um, suitor's not going to Montreal. There's no chance. No. Hell. Uh, Zuccarello, they could trade, but why would they do that? Why would they do that? It doesn't uh, make Zach sense. Zach Parise, they could trade, but that wouldn't make much sense for either team. Um, the, no chance. Minnesota uh, just doesn't look like it has the. The pieces yeah, Minnesota would have to do like Brodeen, Doobie as a throw in, and then like a couple draft picks. Like they would have to give up a lot of their draft picks. Yeah, I don't think they got enough, and yeah. I don't think they'd want to dismantle. They're, they're on the cusp of whether they're going to rebuild or not. Uh, certainly bringing in Price, and Price has to okay it too. So uh, I don't see Price okaying that organization right now in the position that it's in. The only two things that I think places that I think price might okay, uh, or I mean, we might go way off the board here. We have a little, a little bit of time. We didn't even talk about this. He's from Vancouver. <laughs> you know, I think he might say yes to something like that. They don't sign. Uh, More but from- they, you know how much they really love uh, Demko. Uh, Demko, I don't think that they're going to sign Price and have Demko waiting in the wings to be a starter. He looks like he's going to be a starter pretty soon. It doesn't really make much sense. Well, the problem with Colorado is uh, also I'm looking at their team. They don't have the best cap guys that they would move for Price because unless they trade Donskoy, who they're obsessed with, so that might be tough for them to do. No, Uh, I think Donskoy could go because he uh, looks like if you do the the expansion draft – Don Scully looks like he's out. Yeah, you would probably lose him, but it also depends if you value, if you think you're going to win next year, you might say, screw it, I don't care if we lose him. Um, yeah, I think for it sure. depends what they think they're going to do next. Don Scully, Francois, um, and no, something yep. like that would be Plus a good pickup. Audrey is a modified no trade. Um, uh, I think it would be Don Scully and Francois in that yeah. trade. Something like only, that. The only other guy they could go with is, and I don't think they want to trade him because they still really like him in town, uh, is EJ. But I don't know if Montreal would want EJ to the end of 2022-23, but... EJ? Oh, Johnson. No, that wouldn't make sense for them either. Again, we're looking at a rebuild. Don Scoy fills a spot on the roster. Yeah, I was just thinking Eric Johnson's an A. If you want to have a, another guy that 
down a line can basically be the Shea Weber of that line for a young defenseman. Yeah. Uh, it would help with your mentorship. I'm pretty sure Johnson has an NMC too. He does. Uh, he, he yeah, does. and he's not going to want to move to a Montreal organization that's trading price. So he wants team teams. not likely. Right too. I think it'd be something like Francois, Donskoy, and a pick for Price. They've got lots of cap room, and she's I. Who knows? I mean, they Price in that Colorado lineup would be. They got it. They're they're the, they're a contender for sure. They also have to pay Ryan Graves because he's an RFA. They got a lot of guys that they're going to have to sign coming up, and that's why I think that deal might not work. Yeah. I like to go with. I think Pat's Pittsburgh is the most desperate of the bunch. I think they don't care about their future. Uh, they're just looking well, to win. Well, they clearly don't. They keep trading away first round picks like it's a. Relief. Yeah, they they <laughs> don't. They just want to win right now so they can get price and they'll worry about his cap or whatever later. And, Price will go, you know what, I, I got a chance in another cup right now with that team. Why don't we give it a shot? So, uh, personally, and um, maybe the, maybe Montreal doesn't get a goaltender back. Here's a fun story. Marc-Andre Fleury gets to go home for a while. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That could work, yeah. It could. But, yeah, I mean, that's why I feel like in the end, He'll end up staying in Montreal because if Pittsburgh can't figure it out and they can't find the trade they want, I don't know if Colorado, because of who they have to sign, will be able to figure out how to do it and fit in everybody they want to sign, not just this year, but also after next year. Um, so that's a dilemma because uh, Glandis Cog's not getting paid five, five again. So uh, you need to figure out what you're doing there. Uh, so that's a big issue for them. Burakovsky's not getting paid 3-2 again. Uh, so he's going to go up in salary. Um, They've got a crap load of cap space, though. Yeah. They could probably make it work. I think this is my thing. Okay, B, Boric doesn't agree with me. He thinks Price is going to stay. I think Price to Pittsburgh. We'll see who the big mind is here. <laughs> See if it happens. I think it's going to be probably, I think he's going to go to Pittsburgh uh, almost for sure. I just can't see why they would do this for Allen and Montreal and him stay around there. It doesn't make sense to how they're going to fill out the rest of their roster. I could be totally wrong. I've seen a lot of crazy things happen before. And uh, who knows? Oh, maybe they're saying in principle makes sense. The problem is in principle and in reality is. Two completely different. I think it's very realistic. Things uh, where if there's only one team that we think it thoroughly works with, usually that doesn't work out in the end. Usually, what happens is Montreal doesn't get much in return, and that's why I say they take Hornquist because Hornquist is doing Pittsburgh a favor. Taking Hornquist is doing Pittsburgh a favor. Getting Murray is a guy that they aren't really going to take. So they're actually getting a, some maximum value for a, for a player that probably has no value at the time because of all the reasons you say. So they're getting some value. Murray can turn it around. Hornquist can play a role on that team. And then they move on and go from there. So Yeah, we'll see. Well, boys and girls, that's our full 42%. This has been fantastic. Joe and I have been going at this for a while now, uh, having our little bit of a disagreement. I certainly understand. I don't uh, not agree with Joe because it is rare that, it, that when when there aren't a lot of places for a player to go, that he ends up going there. I just think this is one of the special. This is one of the special incidents. In- instances where I believe price is pushing their hand to move and they're going to get whatever they come, they get as much as they can get back for them and put them in the best situation possible. They also have to be very careful how they treat price because they're going to have to sign free agents down the road. And that's another factor that we can't get into because we're already almost at 30 minutes about this. And it didn't even feel like it took that long. <laughs> I know you guys are going to watch it all though for Joe Bork. Perlo, that's our full 42. Thanks for showing up today, boys and girls. Have a great one. Look out for our future content um, and www.steelflyers.com. I highly recommend you check it out.